Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Hedy Lamar, Alan Ladd, and John Loder in Casablanca with Edgar Barrier. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. One bright January morning, <clears throat> just a year ago, the city of Casablanca in French Morocco woke up and found itself famous. It had entertained many mysterious visitors from a world at war, but never before the President of the United States and the Prime Minister of Great Britain. Within a few days, Warner Brothers had rushed their screen drama, Casablanca, to the theaters of the nation. And people marveled at a Hollywood miracle. Actually, of course, the picture had been planned and filmed during the months previous. Because Casablanca had an exciting story to tell even before the president and prime minister arrived. It's a story of love and hate and a background of adventure and sudden death. Tonight we bring you that drama with a cast that producers dream about. Hedy Lamar and Alan Ladd and John Loder. Eddie came back to town last week from Texas with the applause of the soldiers at Camp Hood still ringing in her ears. And so we borrowed her from Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, where she's just completed the picture, Heavenly Body. Alan Ladd, of course, came to us from Paramount. I'm hoping to have Alan for my next picture, following the story of Dr. Wassell. Getting these players together in one drama is a talent scoop of the first magnitude in Hollywood and it's unlikely that it would ever happen in a picture because our stars are under contract at different studios and are kept so busy on their home lots that they aren't loaned out, as the phrase goes. We really should thank Lux Toilet Soap for making this occasion possible. Every bit of work and artistry that has gone into our production, from the first word of the script on paper to the final dress rehearsal, has been designed for your enjoyment. We might call it a bonus that you get when you buy Lux Toilet Soap, above and beyond the bonus of beauty that you expect. And we'll pay that bonus right now, as the curtain rises on the first act of Casablanca, starring Alan Ladd as Rick, Hedy Lamar as Ilsa Lund, and John Loder as Victor Laszlo, with Edgar Barrier as Renault. Everyone knows that name today, Casablanca. Before the war, Casablanca was just another small seaport with its face to the Mediterranean and its back to the North Atlantic. But then, as the Nazi lash descended upon Europe, hordes of refugees, like the boiling waters of a burst dam, flooded into the sanctuary of its white walls. Those with money enough, or influence enough, obtained exit visas bearing the seal of the Vichy government and fled to Lisbon and from Lisbon to the Americas. The others just waited and waited. But all who came to Casablanca were not refugees. The German intelligence was always there when anything unusual occurred. As, for example, the murder of two Nazi couriers. Major Strasser, may I present Captain Raynaud, police prefect of Casablanca. Unoccupied France welcomes you, Major. Thank you. You may find the climate of Casablanca a trifle warm. We Germans must get used to all climates, Captain, from Russian to the Sahara. But perhaps you were not referring to the weather. Oh, what else, my dear Major? The murder of the couriers. What has been done about it? Uh, Captain Raynaud already knows who the murderer is. Excellent. He is in custody? There is no hurry. Tonight, he will come to Rick's. Uh, That cafe, Major, I pointed it out to you. Everybody in Casablanca comes to Rick's, but this one will not leave. Frankly, Captain, I did not journey here simply to find an assassin. The real reason for my visit is Victor Laszlo. I thought as much. Has he arrived yet? Yes, this afternoon, with a very beautiful young woman. I met them. Reno, Laszlo must not leave Casablanca. I have learned that he is prepared to offer a fabulous bribe for a visa... To Lisbon. I am prepared to refuse it. Where is he staying, you know? Major, I even know the time he intends to bathe. I would like to talk with Laszlo. 
Can it be arranged? Undoubtedly, he too will be at Rick's tonight. Everybody comes to Rick's. Or, or did I mention that before? Yes, monsieur. I reserved a table. Victor Laszlo. Yes, monsieur Laszlo. Just one moment, please. Victor, are you sure we should have come here? So in public? There's often the greatest safety in what appears to be a risk. I see no one here who forgot his description. Neither do I. He'll be here, though. Excuse me. I have a ring here. What? A ring. I'm forced to sell it at a great sacrifice. Well, I hardly think that Perhaps I... the lady. The ring is quite unique. You see? That's it, Victor. Yes, it's a very interesting ring. What's your name? Berger, monsieur. I recognized you from the newspaper photographs. We read five times that you were killed in five different places. As you see, five different places? As you can see, it's true each time. Thank heaven we found you, Berger. I'm looking for a man by the name of Ugarte. He's supposed to help us. He's here somewhere. You'll need all the help you can get. Yes, this time they mean to stop me. Oh, I'm so afraid for you, Victor. We've been in difficult places before. Why? Wait, it's coming back. That's all, Berger. Meet us at the bar later. Oh, I don't think we want to buy the ring, but uh, thank you for showing it to us. Yeah? It's France, Rick. France Ugarte. Come in. Uh, what do you want? Oh, nothing much, Rick. Uh, too bad about those German couriers, eh? Well, they got a break. Yesterday, they were just two clerks. Today, they're among the honored dead. You, you will forgive me for saying this, Rick, but you are a very cynical person. I forgive you. <laughs> you, you despise me, don't you? Well, if I gave you any thought, I probably would. But think of the poor refugees who must rot in Casablanca if I did not help them. Is it so bad that through ways of my own, I provide them with exit visas? For a price, Ugarte, for a price. Oh, those poor wretches who cannot meet Renault's price, I, I get it for them at half. Is that so parasitic? Well, I don't mind a parasite. I just object to a cut-rate one. <laughs> well, after tonight, I'm through with the whole business. I, I'm leaving Casablanca. Rick, look. What? Look, Rick, look. Do you know what these papers are? Letters of transit signed by Marshal Vagon. With his signature, they cannot be rescinded or questioned. Not even by Renault. So? So I'm selling these for more money than I ever dreamed of. And then, goodbye. What are you trying to say, Ugarte? <laughs> Rick, I have many friends in Casablanca. But because you despise me, you are the only one I trust. Will you keep these letters for me? How long? Mm, for an hour, perhaps, till my client arrives. Okay. But I don't want them here overnight. Oh, thank you, thank you. No fear of that. Uh, now, Rick... I hope you are more impressed with me. I'll go to share my luck now with your roulette wheel. Hey, wait a minute. Yes? I heard a rumor that those Nazi couriers were carrying letters of transit. No. Yes, poor devils. I... I heard that rumor, too. You're right, Ugarty. I am a little more impressed with you. Yeah. Good evening, Rick. Hello, Renault. Hear that plane, Ricky? It's going to Lisbon. You'd like to be on it? Why, what's in Lisbon? The clipper that goes to America. Rick, I have often speculated on why you do not return to America. There's a roulette table inside for people who like to speculate. Yes. I noticed Ugarte just went in. Yes, you'll come out poor. What was it, Rick? Whatever brought you to Casablanca? Did you abscond with the church funds back home? Did you run off with somebody's wife? I should like to think that you killed a man. It's the romantic in me. Well, I'll tell you. It was a combination of all three. Someday I'll find out. Oh, Rick, before you came, I took the liberty of escorting a visitor to your best table, a German, Major Strasser. I wanted him to be on hand for the excitement, because tonight we're making an arrest here. Again? This time a murderer. Please don't warn him, Rick. Now, look, I stick my neck out for nobody. And I'm staging the arrest here out of my high regard for you. It'll interest the customers. And perhaps Major Strasser. Perhaps. Cassell. Yes, Captain. 
You will find Franz Ugarte inside at the roulette table. Yes. Arrest him for the murder of the German couriers. Yes, Captain. Or he'll be carrying some letters of transit. Be sure you get them. Yes, sir. Louis, there's more than Ugarte on your mind tonight. Oh, you're very observant, Rick. There are many exit visas sold in this cafe, but we know that you have never sold them. That is why I permit you to remain open. No, I thought it was because I let you win at roulette. Oh, that's another reason. Rick, a man arrived today in Casablanca on his way to America. Right now he's at the bar. He will offer a fortune to anyone who will furnish him with an exit visa. What man? Victor Laszlo. Why, Ricky, this is the first time I've ever seen you so interested. Laszlo has succeeded in interesting half the world. I wonder how he'll manage it. Manage what? His escape. He escaped from a concentration camp, and the Nazis have chased him all over Europe. But this is the end of the chase, Rick. 10,000 francs says it isn't. Make it 5,000. I'm only a poor, corrupt official. No, no matter how clever he is, he still needs an exit visa. I should say two. He's traveling with a lady. He'll settle for one. Oh, I think not. I have seen the lady. Now, where did you get the idea that I might help Laszlo? Hmm? Because I know all about you, Ricky. Enough at least to know you're more a sentimentalist than a cynic. I know that in 1935, you ran guns into Ethiopia. I know that in 1936, you risked your neck with the loyalists in Spain. And got well paid on both occasions. The winning side would have paid you much better. Maybe. Louis, why do you want to keep Laszlo here? Gestapo spank? You overestimate the influence of the Gestapo. In Casablanca, I'm the boss. I do not interfere with them, nor they... <laughs> Cassell is a very noisy policeman. Monsieur Laszlo, what was a learned welcome to Rick's. You welcomed us this afternoon at the airport, Captain. I welcome everyone, everywhere. Oh, my profoundest apologies for the recent disturbance, most unfortunate. Yes, for the poor man who was killed. Horrible. Horrible, mademoiselle? But then may I ask, why did you remain? Oh, permit me, Major Strasser, Mademoiselle Lund, Monsieur Laszlo. We've heard of you, Major. And the Major asked, why did you remain after the regrettable shooting? We were here to meet someone. Uh, he's not yet arrived. Ilza, I think perhaps we should leave now. It might be wiser, Monsieur. I do not think your friend will come. They just removed the body of Franz Ugarte to the morgue. Franz Ugarte? Your friend. I'm sorry, Captain, but the name Franz Ugarte means absolutely nothing to me. Oh, come now, monsieur. We know that uh, you... This is enough for tonight. Tomorrow at 10, monsieur Laszlo, in the captain's office. With mademoiselle. We are not under your authority, Major. This is French soil. Captain Renault, is it your order that we come to your office? Uh, let us say it is my request. Very well. At 10 o'clock in the morning. Good night. Sleep well, Major. Now, my friends, after all this unpleasantness, a little relaxation. Sit down, please. Waiter. Yes, Captain. A bottle of the best champagne. Put it on my bill. Oh, now, please. Oh, they put it on my bill. I tear the bill up. It's just a little game we play. We, sh <laughs> we shouldn't stay. We seem to be the only ones left. I'm afraid Ricky will be very cross with me, killing one customer and driving the others away. Oh, but that's no reason why you shouldn't be entertained. Sam. Even, Captain. Sing something nice for my guest, Sam. Sure, boss. Mademoiselle, I had been informed you were the most beautiful woman ever to visit Casablanca. That is a gross understatement. Thank you. You're very kind. Captain, that man singing. He's been staring at you for the past five minutes, Ilsa. I've seen him before somewhere. Oh, Sam? Oh, he came here from Paris with Rick. Rick? Who is he? <laughs> Mademoiselle, you are in Rick's. And Rick is, well, is what? But he is the kind of a man that, well, if I were a woman and I were not around, I would be in love with Rick. No offense, monsieur. If you, uh, if you both won't think me terribly rude, will you excuse me a moment? I want to talk to Sam. To Sam? Uh, of course, my dear. Hurry back, mademoiselle. With all your thoughts, I love you still. Hello, Sam. Hello, Miss Ilsa. Never expected to see you again. It's been a long time. Yes, miss. 
Where is he, Sam? Why, who, miss? Rick. I don't know. I ain't seen him all night. Will he be back? Uh, not tonight no more. He ain't coming. He went home. Does he always leave so early after a shooting? Oh, Sam, you used to be a much better liar. Leave him alone, Miss Ilsa. You're bad luck to him. Sam, play it once, for old time's sake. Uh, I don't know what you mean. Play it, Sam, as time goes by. I can't remember it, Miss Ilsa. Please. Sing it, Sam. Oh, Miss Ilsa. You must remember this. A kiss is still a kiss. A sigh is just a sigh. The fundamental things apply. As time goes by And when two lovers woo They still say I thought I told you never to play that Now you've done it Well, Rick, come here I want you to meet some charming people Well, hello, Elsa Hello, Rick Oh, you two know each other Well, then you also know Monsieur Victor Laszlo? No Oh One hears a great deal about Rick in Casablanca and about you everywhere. Won't you join us for a drink? This is the most interesting cafe, even without the gunplay. I congratulate you. And I congratulate you. What for? For your work. Thank you. I try. We all try. You succeed. Well, I can't get over you two knowing each other. I wasn't sure you were the same. Let's see. The last time we met, wasn't it in Paris? Well, that shouldn't be too hard to remember. It was the day the Germans marched in. The Germans wore gray. You wore blue. Ilza, I don't wish to be the one to say it, but it is late. Yes, so it is. Carl, the bill. Forget it, Carl. It's my party. Oh, it is. We're all in all a most unusual evening. We'll come again. Do that. Will you say goodnight to Sam for me? Sure. There's still nobody in the world who can sing as time goes by like Sam. He hasn't done it in a long time. Good night. Oh, I'd like just one word with Rick, Monsieur Laszlo, and then if you wish, I'd be delighted to drive you to your hotel. Thank you. We'll wait outside. A very puzzling fellow, this Rick. Just what sort is he? Oh, I really can't say. I met him in Paris. We were once acquaintances. In just a few minutes, Mr. DeMille presents Hedy Lamar, Alan Ladd, and John Loder in Act Two of Casablanca. And now, here are two young workers in a busy office getting ready to leave for the day. Sue, if you look in that mirror any harder, you'll break it. Why the anxious expression? Oh, no letter from Jim today? Yes, Jim wrote, and he may get a furlough next month. Say, Peggy. Yes, Sue? You know, everyone used to say what a swell complexion I had. Guess it was my best feature. But lately, it doesn't look like anything. Lost the old sparkle, eh? And now you're worrying because Jim's coming home. You've been working all hours lately. Been neglecting your beauty care, I'll bet. Well, it is easier not to bother sometimes, I'll admit. Yes, and it's practically fatal to take that attitude about your looks. Now, listen to your Aunt Peggy, Susie. She's got it prescribed for you. Every day without fail, an active lather facial. Active lather facial? With Lux Toilet Soap, the soap screen stars use. And believe me, it works. I know, because Lux Soap Care helped my skin to look lots nicer. Now, here's what you do. And this is the Lux Soap Beauty Facial Peggy told her friend to take. Cover your face generously with that nice, creamy lather. Work it in gently, but thoroughly, too. Now, rinse with warm water, splash with cold, and dry with a soft towel. Easy, isn't it? Just try that every single day from now on. And only a few weeks later, Sue said... Oh, Peggy, I owe you and Lux Soap a world of thanks. What a thrill it was to have Jim tell me. Sue, darling, you look lovely, prettier than ever. Many a girl has found daily Lux Toilet Soap facials really make skin lovelier. Recent tests show that actually three out of four complexions improved with this care, grew softer, smoother. Why not let this fine white soap give your skin protecting care it should toilet soap tomorrow? And if you find your dealer is temporarily out of stock due to wartime conditions, 
be sure to have more soon. Remember, Lux Toilet Soap, Hollywood's Beauty Soap, is worth waiting for. And now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. Act two of Casablanca, starring Alan Ladd as Rick, Hedy Lamar as Ilsa, and John Loder as Victor, with Edgar Barrier as Renault. It's hours later, and in Rick's cafe, a solitary lamp still burns. Rick sits at a table staring into an empty highball glass, and in the shadows... Sam fingers the keyboard quietly. Boss, ain't you going to bed? Mm-mm. Not right now. Well, ain't you planning on going to bed in the near future? No. Go on, keep playing, will you? Okay. Boss, let's get out of here. There ain't nothing but trouble for you here. She's coming back. I know she's coming back. Well, we could take the car, you and me, and drive till morning. We go fishing somewhere and stay until she leaves. The guy they dies and she walks in. One out, one in. Of all the joints and all the towns and all the world, she walks in a mine. Hey, what's that your plan? Oh, just a little something of my own. Now, stop it. You know what I want to hear? No, I don't. Now you played it for her, you can play it for me. Yes, boss. Boss, listen. What? You got company. And I was counting on it. Rick, may I talk to you? Uh, so long, boss. Miss Ilsa, you shouldn't have come. Want a drink? No. Why did you have to come to Casablanca? I wouldn't have come if I'd known you were here. Believe me, Rick, it's true. Why about your voice? Still the same. Rick, dear, I'll go any place with you. We'll get on a train together and we'll never stop. Don't, Rick. Please don't. I understand how you feel. How long did I know you, honey? Oh, I didn't count the days. I did. Every one of them. Mostly I remember the last one. Paris. <laughs> the wow finish guy waiting at a station in the rain with a marriage license in his pocket and a, a funny look on his kisser because a, uh, a sledgehammer just hit him between the eyes. Can I tell you a story, Rick? There's a go. I'll finish. I don't know the finish yet myself. Okay. Maybe one will come to you as you go along. It's, it's about a girl who met a man she's heard about all her life. A great and courageous man. And soon, everything this girl knew or ever became was because of this man. She looked up to him and worshipped him with a feeling she thought was love. I've heard bare stories in my time. Tell me, was he the guy you left me for? Was it Laszlo? Or were there a few others in between? Rick. A lot of people ran away from Paris that day. I wonder if they all left notes. You left a note, didn't you? Sam brought it to me at the railroad station. I guess it was a love light. My eyes had helped him spot me and all that mob. Yes, I wrote you a note. I know it was cowardly, but I just couldn't face you. I cannot go with you or ever see you again. Remember? I must not ask why. You just believe that I love you and God bless you. It's a literal translation, Elsa. I thought, I thought if I came here tonight and spoke to you, I could make you understand. I'm sorry, Rick. Don't give up, honey. I'm just a slow study. Call again sometime and give it another word. We have searched Ugarte's apartment again, Major. No luck. Someone else must have them. And I strongly suspect that someone is Rick. I suggest you continue the search in the cafe. If Rick has the letters of transit, he is much too smart to let you find them there. You give him too much credit. Just another blundering American. We must not underestimate American blundering, Major. 
I was with them when they blundered into Berlin in 1918. As to Laszlo, we want him watched. 24 hours a day. Yes, it's 10 o'clock, Major, and he and the girl are waiting now for us. Send him in. Send them in, Cassell. I do not think we're going to get very far with Laszlo this morning. Nevertheless, there's no loss in making him the obvious offer. Only a loss of time. Oh, good morning. I'm delighted to see you both. Laszlo, mademoiselle. Good morning. Good morning. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Laszlo, we will not mince words. Good. Let's begin by saying that I'm an escaped prisoner of the Third Reich, from whom no one ever escapes. I do not deny you are an exceptional man. Monsieur, you say Third Reich as if you expect there will be others. I take what comes, Major. So far, yes. You have been fortunate enough to elude us. You have reached Casablanca. I intend to make certain you stay here. <laughs> Whether or not you succeed, Major, is, of course, problematical. Not quite. On all exit visas issued here in Casablanca, Captain Renault's signature is necessary. Captain, would you think it possible that Laszlo will receive a visa? And I'm afraid not, monsieur. Well, perhaps I'll like it here. And you, mademoiselle? You, uh, you needn't be concerned about me. As a matter of fact, you could both be on your way to Lisbon this very night. But, of course, under certain conditions. Well, Major, what are your terms? As leader of the underground movement, you know who the other leaders are. In Paris, Athens, Prague, Amsterdam... And Berlin? Furnish me their names and exact whereabouts, and you will have your visa immediately. And the honor of serving the Third Reich. Major, what if he did give them to you? What if you did track them down and kill them? From every corner of Europe, hundreds, thousands would rise and take our places. Even Nazis can't kill that far. You make only one mistake. In the event anything unfortunate should occur to Monsieur Laszlo, no one could take his place. Thank you. You wouldn't dare interfere with him here. This is still unoccupied France. Any violation of neutrality will reflect on you, Captain. Monsieur, so far as it is in my power, that neutrality will be respected. Are you finished with us? For the moment, yes. Then good day. Come, Ilza. Your next step toward securing a visa is what, monsieur? I don't know. Well, let me save you some time. Sooner or later, the man to see will be Senor Ferrari. And he operates the Blue Parrot Cafe across the street from your hotel. Good day, mademoiselle. <laughs> Hello, Ferrari. I saw the supply truck come in. I thought I'd stop by for the American cigarettes. But why yourself? My boy will bring them over. Every time he does, the order's a little bit short. Carrying charges, my boy. Carrying charges. I'm glad you're here, Rick. I want to talk to you. The news about Ugarte upset me very much. Now, look, you don't feel any sorry for Ugarte than I do. Of course not. What upsets me is that no one knows where those letters of transit are. Practically no one. If I could lay my hands on them, I could make a fortune. And so could I. And I'm a poor businessman. I have a proposition for whoever has those letters. I'll handle the entire transaction, get rid of the letters, and take all the risk for a small percentage. That's the proposition I have for whoever has those letters. Well, I'll tell him when he comes in. Rick, I think you know where they are. The Norton Strasser thinks so, too. That's really why I came over here. To give them a good chance to tear my place apart. Excuse me, senor. Yes? There's a man who wishes to see you, Monsieur Laszlo. Oh, I was rather expecting him. Send him in. Is he alone? There is a lady also. She said she would wait outside. But she will not wait alone, eh, hey, Rick? Well, suppose you just concentrate on Laszlo. Hey, Ferrari? <laughs> <laughs> Send him in, Sasha. The back way. A little courtesy for Rick. Good morning. Hello, Rick. I'm sorry about last night. Doesn't matter. The story had me a little confused. Or maybe it was the bourbon. Forget it. You can repeat it now. I'm reasonably sober. I don't think I will. Why not? After all, I got stuck with a railway ticket. All right. Victor Laszlo is my husband. Well, what do you know? And he was even when I knew you in Paris. I don't believe it. There seems to be so much you don't believe. What about us? It happened almost a year before I met you. He loved me, and I thought I loved him. Soon after we were married, he had to leave France. And this time he has to leave Casablanca. Yes, he must. Oh, you have so changed, Rick. The Rick I knew in Paris, I could tell him, but not you. I'll be leaving Casablanca soon, and I hope we'll never meet again. 
if we leave it that way, maybe we'll remember those old days and forget last night. Well, I'm not leaving, Casablanca. I'm settled now. Above a saloon. You walk up one flight of stairs. I'll expect you. It will take a miracle to get you out of Casablanca, Monsieur Laszlo. And the Germans have outlawed miracles. I got tired of waiting, Victor. Do you mind? You don't, mademoiselle. Please. You see, as leader of all illegal activities in Casablanca, I am an influential and respected man. But I am helpless to do anything for Monsieur Laszlo. You, however, are a different matter. He thinks it might just be possible to get an exit visa for you. To go along? Yes. We're only interested in two visas, senor. Please, Ilsa, you must get to America. And believe me, somehow, sometime, I'll join you. What if things were different? What if I had to stay and there was only one visa? Would you take it? Yes, I would. Then why didn't you leave me in Lille? When I had trouble getting out of there, or in Marseille, when I was ill, and you were in desperate danger every second. Why didn't you leave me then, Victor? I meant to. But something always held me up. I, too, am a very sensitive man, monsieur. I know. I happen to love her very much. So, for the present, senor, we'll go on looking for two visas. Thank you. I am moved to make a suggestion. You are aware of Ugarty and the letters of transit? Yes, uh, slightly. I'll venture to guess that Ugarty left those letters in Rick's cafe. He is a difficult customer, but it is worth the chance. You have been very patient, senor. Good day. Now, what's all this about? A near riot in your own cafe. You don't even bother to get up and see for yourself. I've got other things on my mind. What happened? <laughs> Some German officers started to sing the watch on the Rhine. They wanted the customers to join in. Well, they did. Except what they sang sounded more like La Marseillaise. Oh, with my usual tact, I handled the situation perfectly. Now, Rick. Hmm? My men gave this place a rather thorough going over this morning. Yeah, we just barely got it cleaned up in time to open. As I told my men to be especially destructive... You know how that impresses Germans. Where are the letters, Rick? You see, Captain, the situation is not as much under control as you believe. That song is verboten. How dare they sing it? Yeah, now, my dear Major, we cooperate with your government, but we cannot control the feelings of these refugees. Captain, are you entirely certain which side you are on? <laughs> oh, I blow with the wind, Major. And right now, the prevailing breeze is from Vichy. Hmm. Well, I have been thinking. It is too dangerous for us to let Larsen leave Casablanca. But it may also be too dangerous to let him stay. We know all of North Africa is honeycombed with traitors just waiting for someone to lead them. Yes, it poses an intricate problem. There's one man who could solve it. Who? He just walked in. Victor Laszlo. I'm a very bright boy, Laszlo. I figured you came here to see me, and I figured you preferred seeing me in my office, alone. You do nothing but bewilder me. But you hope I may also be able to help you. You told me once you knew of my activities then you must know how important it is that I get out of here to help continue the work of a very great movement. The problems of the world are beyond me, Laszlo. I'm just a saloon keeper. My friends in the underground have told me differently. They mentioned Spain and Ethiopia and a strange tendency of yours to be always with the underdog. Well, I found it a very expensive hobby. But then I never was much of a businessman. Are you enough of a businessman to appreciate an offer of 100,000 francs? I appreciate it, but I don't accept it. Two hundred thousand? Make it a million francs or ten francs, the answer is still no. There must be some reason why you refuse to sell the letters. There is. I suggest you ask your wife. I beg your pardon? I said ask your wife. Are you leaving, Victor? Where are you going? Oh, I thought I mentioned it. There's a meeting of the underground. Oh, please don't go, Victor. I'm frightened. Look. Look out the window. I don't have to, darling. I'm used to being trailed. What's going to happen, Victor? Who knows, Ilse, dear? Strasser now threatens to find some excuse to put me quietly away in jail. All the more reason why you must stay here tonight. I'm frightened too, Ilse, but what can I do? Hide in a hotel room or carry on the best I can? Whatever I'd say, you'd carry on. Victor, why didn't you tell me about Rick? You saw him, didn't you? Apparently he has the letters. Yes? but no intention of selling them. You'd think that if sentiment wouldn't persuade him, that money would. Did he give you any reason? 
He suggested that I ask you. Ask me? Ilza, when I was in the concentration camp, were you lonely in Paris? Yes, Victor, I was. I know what it is to be lonely. Is there anything you wish to tell me? No. No, there isn't. My dear, I love you very much. Yes, I know. Uh, Victor, whatever I do, will you... Will you believe me that I... You don't even have to say it. I'll believe you. Good night, dear. Good night, Victor. Please be careful. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. In a few minutes, Mr. DeMille and our stars Alan Ladd, Hedy Lamar, and John Loder will return in Act Three of Casablanca. And now, here's our Hollywood reporter, Libby Collins. Greetings, Libby. What's new? Well, for one thing, Mr. Kennedy, my hat. What do you think of it? Your hat, Libby? Why, uh, it's nice. Very nice. Yes, I like it. Oh, come on now. Stop hedging. What do you really think of it? To tell the truth, Libby, I hardly noticed the hat. I was looking at you. Well, Mr. Kennedy, that's a compliment. But just let me turn around. Now, look. Oh, oh, I see. It's really quite a hat. Libby, that must be very new. It is, but well, how would you know? Well, it's so sort of simple. Not one of those dizzy numbers that looks as though it might fly off into space any minute. Mr. Kennedy, you're an observant man. This is the newest thing. The profile cloche. It fits snugly on the head, and it's meant to frame the face, not take attention away from it. I think I begin to see why you wore that little hat tonight, Libby. Of course. To show that it's more important than ever for a woman to have nice, smooth skin. Sure. Because with that kind of headgear, the emphasis is less on the hat than it is on the face underneath it. Well, Libby, I guess many a woman is going to be mighty happy about her Lux Soap complexion care, then. Yes, this hat seems designed to set off a lovely Lux complexion. And it's going to be a popular style this spring. Then daily Lux Soap complexion care ought to be more popular than ever, too. Because gentle Lux toilet soap really makes skin softer, smoother. Recent tests showed that Lux Soap beauty facials improved actually three out of four complexions, you know. Well, Mr. Kennedy, nearly every famous star in Hollywood is devoted to this fine white soap. Screen stars say the creamy Lux Soap lather is wonderfully kind to delicate skin. And that's why, Libby, I'm going to urge every woman in our audience who hasn't tried Lux Toilet Soap to get some of Hollywood's beauty soap and use it every day. Here's a thrift tip, too. It's patriotic not to waste soap. And because Lux Soap is hard-milled, you can use it down to the last thin sliver. It'll last even longer if you always put it in a soap dish that's dry. Moisten the thin leftover piece and press against your new cake of Lux Toilet Soap. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. We'll report on the offstage doings of our stars after the play. But now here's the curtain for Act Three of Casablanca, starring Hedy Lamar, Alan Ladd, and John Loda with Edgar Barrier. For nearly an hour after Victor Laszlo left for the meeting of the underground... Ilsa sat motionless in the drab hotel room. Suddenly, her mind made up, she takes an object out of her husband's briefcase, walks through the dark, quiet night to Rick's cafe, and up the outside stairs that lead to the second floor. I told you this morning you'd come around. But this is a little head of schedule. Rick, I had to see you. That's what you said last night. All this has nothing to do with the letters of transit, has it? Seems as long as I have those letters, I'll never be lonely. You can ask any price you want, but you must give them to me. I went through all that with your husband. It's no deal. I know how you feel about me, but uh, I'm asking you to put your feelings aside for something more important. Do I have to hear again what a great man your husband is, what an important cause he's fighting for? It was your cause, too. In your own way, you fought for the same thing. Well, I'm not fighting for anything anymore except myself. Rick... Once you loved me, if those days mean anything at all to you... I would bring up Paris if I were you. It's poor salesmanship. Listen, listen to me, Rick. If you only knew the truth... I wouldn't believe you no matter what you told me. You'd say anything now to get what you want. 
You want to feel sorry for yourself, don't you? One woman has hurt you, and you take your revenge on the rest of the world. Rick. Rick, please help us. If you don't, Victor will die in Casablanca. Well, I'm going to die in Casablanca, too. It's a good spot for it. <laughs> All right. I tried. I tried to reason with you, Rick. Now I want those letters. A gun, Ilsa? Is that really a gun in your hand? Where are the letters? Right here in my pocket. Put them on the table. Uh-uh. For the last time, put them on the table. All right, go ahead and shoot, Ilsa. You'll be doing me a favor. I can't. You know I can't. I've done nothing but make a fool of myself. Oh, I don't know what to do, what to say. I thought I would never see you again. The day you left Paris, if you knew what I went through, if you knew how much I loved you, how much I still love you. All right, I'm crazy. I'm crazy, but I believe you. You win. Ilza, what happened? What was it? I've, I've imagined everything in the world and none of it very pretty. I've tried to tell you. A few months after Victor left France, word came that he was in a concentration camp. And then, not long after, another message that he was dead. Shot trying to escape. I had nothing. Not even hope. Then I met you. Why weren't you honest with me then? Why didn't you tell me you'd been married, that he was dead or something? Victor wanted it that way. It was his way of protecting me. I knew too much about his work. The Gestapo found out I was his wife. It would be dangerous for me and for those working with us. When did you find out he was still alive? Just before you and I were going to leave, his friends came. They were hiding him in a freight car on the outskirts of Paris. He was almost dead. Well, that's it, Rick. Still a story without an ending. What about now? Now? I don't know. Except that I'll never have the strength again to run away from you. And Laszlo? You'll help him, won't you? You'll see that he gets out, and then he'll leave us his work, all that he's been living for. All except you. Oh, I can't fight anymore. I don't know anymore what's right and what's wrong. You'll have to think for both of us. For all of us. Okay. Okay, I will. If only I didn't love you so. Oh, Elsa, I... Wait a minute. What's the matter? Just heard a door close quiet. Hey, Sam. Is that you? Yeah, boss. What's the matter? That Mr. Laszlo, I found him crawling through our cellar window. Victor. Come up here. Does he know you're here? No. There was a meeting of the underground tonight. They must have been following him. Ono's men. Strasser's men. So he picks my place to hide. That's fine. Well, you got some iodine, boss? He cut his hand, breaking the wind in. Oh. Hello, Sam. Good evening, Miss Ilsa. Sam, I want you to take Miss Lund to a hotel. What about Victor? He cut his hand, didn't he? I don't like blood on my floor. I'll go down and patch him up. And Sam. Yeah, boss. Miss Lund will prefer going out the back stairs. I'm sorry about this, Rick. I've had a little trouble. Now, forget it. Well, I guess I'd ought to take care of your hand. Thanks. If it's all right with you, I'd like to stay here a few minutes longer. Yeah. Don't you sometimes wonder if it's worth all this, what you're fighting for? We might as well question why we breathe. If we stop breathing, we'll die. If we stop fighting our enemies, the world will die. What of it? You know how you sound, Rick. Like a man who is trying to convince himself of something he doesn't at all believe. Each of us has a destiny, for good or evil. Hmm. I get the point. I wonder if you do. I wonder if you know that you're trying to escape from yourself and you'll never succeed. Uh, you seem to know all about it. I know a good deal more about you than you suspect. I know, for instance, that you're in love with a woman. It's perhaps a strange circumstance that we should both be in love with her. No one's to blame and I ask no explanation. I ask only one thing. You won't give me the letters of transit? All right. But I want Ilza to be safe. I ask you as a favor to use the letters to take her away from Casablanca. You love her that much? Apparently you think of me only as the leader of a cause. Well, I'm 
also a human being. Yes, I love her that much. You should not leave your back doors unlocked, Monsieur. Lee. Yeah, that's right, Cassell. No telling who might break in. Monsieur Laszlo, you'll come with us. We have a warrant for your arrest. Ricky, I advise you not to be too interested in what happens to Laszlo. Oh, come on. Stop bluffing. All you can do is find him a few thousand francs. You might as well let him go now. Hey, what are you charging him with? I haven't quite decided. Meanwhile, if by any chance you were thinking of helping him to escape... And what makes you think I'd do that? Because, one, you bet 5,000 francs that he would, and two, you've got the letters of transit. Don't bother to deny it. All right, get ready for a shock, Louis. Yeah, I have the letters, but I intend to use them myself. I'm leaving Casablanca on the last plane tonight. What? And I'm taking a friend with me. One you would appreciate. What friend? Bill Zalun. Hmm. Now, that ought to put your mind at rest about my wanting to help Laszlo escape. He's the last man I'd want to see get out of here. You didn't come here to tell me this. Since you have the letters, you know very well you can fill in your names and leave any time you wish. Yeah. We have a legal right to go, but people sometimes are held in Casablanca in spite of their legal rights. Laszlo, for instance. What makes you think I'd want to hold you? Ilse is Laszlo's wife. She knows things with interest Strasser tremendously. Louis, I'll make a deal with you. Go on. If you could get something really big against Laszlo, something that would chuck him in a concentration camp for years, that would be quite a haul for you, wouldn't it? Yes. Germany, uh, Vichy would be very grateful. Mm-hmm. Then release Laszlo now. You'll be at my place half an hour before the plane leaves. I'll arrange to have Laszlo come there to pick up the letters of transit. That will give you criminal grounds to arrest him. You take him, and Ilse and I get away. There's something about this I don't quite understand. You were never before interested in any woman. Well, she just isn't any woman. I see. How do you know that I'll keep the, my end of the bargain? Or that you'll keep your end of the bargain? You've got Laszlo inside? Yes. Well, let me see him alone now. We'll make the arrangements. Open up your microphones and you'll hear every word. You would anyway. Ricky, Ricky, I'm really going to miss you. Apparently, you're the only one in Casablanca who has even less scruples than I. Well, Rick, 40 minutes and you'll be on your way to Lisbon. Yep. Rick's Cafe. Oh, this place will never be the same without you. I sold it to Ferrari. Oh, don't worry. He understands you're still the win at roulette. Oh, thanks. You have the letters, Rick? Yeah, right here. Tell me, when we searched the place, where were they? I dropped them in Sam's piano. Serves me right for not being musical. Oh, here they are. You better wait in my office. Yes, a good idea. Hello, Elsa. Where's Laszlo? Oh, he'll be right in. He's just paying the driver. Rick. What? Haven't you told Victor yet uh, that he's going alone? He thinks I'm leaving with him. I'll tell him later. But uh, it's all right, isn't it? You were able to arrange everything. Oh, sure, sure, sure. But, Victor... We'll tell him at the airport. The less time to think, the easier for all of us. Just trust me. Yes, yes. I don't know how to thank you, Rick. Save it. There's still lots of things to do. I brought the money. It's in this briefcase. Forget it. You'll need it in America. But we made a deal. Never mind that. Yeah, I got the letters here. They're made out in blank and signed by General Vagon. All you have to do is fill in the blanks. I'm sorry, Laszlo. You're under arrest again. Accessory to the murder of the couriers from whom those letters were stolen. Uh, you're surprised about my friend Ricky. Well, the explanation is simple. Love, it seems, has triumphed over virtue. Oh, now, take it easy, Louis. Nobody's going to be arrested. Not for a while yet. Have you taken leave of your senses? Yeah. Now, sit down. Oh, Ricky, Ricky, put down that gun. Now, look, I wouldn't like to shoot you, Louis, but I will if you don't behave. Under the circumstances, then I will sit down. Yeah, and keep your hands on the table. I'm very unhappy, Ricky. There's a telephone right next to you, Louie. I'll pick it up and dial the airport. We don't want any trouble out there either. Remember, Louie, this gun is pointed right at your heart. Oh, that's my least vulnerable spot. Hello? Hello, hello? Is this the airport? What are you talking about? This is Major Strasser. Captain Leno, I want to speak to the operations manager. What? Oh, Go ahead, Renault. Oh, monsieur. A man and a woman will arrive shortly at the airport. Huh? They will go aboard the Lisbon plane. They carry two letters of transit. Ah. 
there is to be absolutely no trouble made for them. Understand? Right. Be there right away. Thank you. Thank you. Lisbon plane taking off in five minutes. This is the last call for passengers to please board the plane. Lisbon plane, five minutes. You gotta hurry now, Laszlo. Take care of your luggage. We'll wait here. Here's a fountain pen, Louis. I think it might look nicer if you filled in the names on the letters. You think of everything, don't you? Yeah. And the names are Mr. and Mrs. Victor Laszlo. Rick, why my name? Because you're getting on the plane. I, I don't understand. What about you? Yes, what about you? I'm staying here. No. No, Rick, what's happened? Last night, you said... Last night, I said I'd do the thinking for the both of us. Well, I've done a lot of it since then. It all adds up to just one thing. You're getting on that plane with Laszlo. I won't leave you again, Rick. I won't. Listen to me. Do you have any idea what you would have to look forward to if you stay here? We'd both wind up in a concentration camp. I'm afraid Major Strasser might insist. You're saying this only to make me go. I'm saying it because it's true. Inside of us, we both know that you belong to Victor. And what happens to you? Well, I've got a job to do, Ilson. And where I'm going, you can't follow. I'm sounding noble now. I'm not very good at it. But it doesn't take much to see that the problems of two little people, well, they just don't amount to a hill of beans in this crazy world. Someday you'll understand that. Everything's in order. All except one thing. There's something you have to know before we leave. Please, you don't have to explain anything. But I'm going to, because it may make a difference to you later on. You know about Rick and me? Yes. But you didn't know I was with him last night at his place when you were there. No. She came to get the letters. She tried everything to get them and nothing worked. She did her best to convince me she was still in love with me. But that was over a long time ago. For your sake, she pretended it wasn't. Well, I let her pretend. I understand. Now, here are the letters. Good luck. Welcome back to the fight, Rick. Are you ready, darling? Yes, I am. Goodbye, Rick. God bless you. Come on, go on. You better hurry. You'll miss that plane. Well, there they go, Rick. <laughs> I was right. You are a sentimentalist. I don't know what you're talking about. You know I'll have to arrest you, of course. Yeah, as soon as the plane takes off, Louis. Let me know. Oh, I may still win my bet, Rick. Reno, what was the meaning of that phone call? Victor Laszlo is on that plane. No, stop him. Stop him. What are you standing here for? Because Monsieur Rick has a gun in my stomach. I was... I was willing to shoot Captain Raynaud. I'm willing to shoot you too, Major. Are you crazy? Guards! Guards! Don't call anyone, Major. I'll shoot. I'll stop it myself. Wait! Wait! The plane must not take off! The plane must... What's wrong here? Did someone shoot? What are you doing? Oh, Captain Raynaud. Someone has just shot Major Strasser. Oh. Oh! Telephone Lieutenant Cassell immediately. And tell him to round up the usual suspects. Yes, Captain. Ricky, it might be a good idea for you to disappear from Casablanca for a while. There's a free French garrison at Brazzaville. I could be induced to arrange your passage. Hey, look, you still owe me 5,000 francs. 5,000 francs should just about pay our expenses. Our expenses? Mm-hmm. Oh, Louis, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. <laughs> In private life, Hedy Lamar is Mrs. John Loder. And so, as we present our stars for a curtain call, I'll introduce them as Alan Ladd and <clears throat> Mr. and Mrs. John Loder. Although they've been married almost a year, it's our first chance to congratulate them. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. You know, he beats me. What do you take mean? Off Come your on, coat, take off Mr. your coat. Loder. At uh, Gin Romney. You just saved me. <laughs> we want your expert opinion on something, Mr. DeMille. For you, Hedy? Anything. When a husband and wife are in one of your plays, do you recommend a little extra rehearsing at home? No, oh, definitely, John. Offhand, I, I can't think of anything more pleasant than uh, going over a love scene with uh, Hedy. If Mrs. DeMille is listening, he's only kidding. Uh, we better drop this. 
Well, I'll change the subject, CB. Because there's something I want to say to Humphrey Bogart's fans. It was a privilege for me to play a part that he made famous, but, well, really, nobody could play it like Bogie. And I'd like to wish you... <laughs> and I'd like to wish him all the luck in the world over there in the Mediterranean area where he's entertaining American soldiers. Now, luck and a safe return. I suppose Alan has shown you the photographs of his new daughter, Hetty. Why, no. Well, how'd I miss you? It seems I just have a dozen or so around or something. <laughs> pure accident, pure accident. But uh, her beauty reminds me of something that I must ask John as man to man. Straight answer? Yes, John. I want to know if Hetty sees that, uh, that you get the right kind of uh, soap at home. <laughs> Why, Mr. DeMille? Uh, I'll answer that, Mr. DeMille but I'm a little hurt you even ask. I have Lux soap in my dressing room at the studio, and naturally at home, too. I've used it for years. And lucky Lux to be on such good terms with you, Hetty. Now let me tell you what we've planned for next week. What's the show, CB? One of the big dramatic prizes of the past year. The Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer hit, Random Harvest. <laughs> and that isn't all, because our stars will be... Ronald Coleman and Greer Garson. They're the original stars of the picture. And next Monday night, we present them both in this powerful story of a soldier and the girl who loves him. A great drama made even greater by the artistry of Greer Garson and Ronald Coleman. It's a wonderful picture, Mr. DeMille. I'll be listening. Good night. Goodbye. Nice Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. That applause goes from coast to coast. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there's a tiny island in the mid-Pacific called Tarawa. That pronunciation, incidentally, is from the National Geographic Society. That island will never be important economically. It is no rich source of raw materials. But the name of Tarawa has been written indelibly into American memory in the blood of American sons. Out of the first group of Marines who landed on Tarawa, more than half will never fight again. Is there anyone listening who can truthfully say, I can't afford to buy any more war bonds? That was just a tiny island. The continent of Europe is yet to come. The tempo of invasion is moving ever faster. That's why we have a fourth war loan drive. That's why every American who deserves that name will buy at least one extra war bond now. We must not only back the attack, we must help our boys to lead it. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Ronald Coleman and Greer Garson in Random Harvest. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Alan Ladd appeared through the cooperation of Paramount Pictures, whose current production is Miracle of Morgan's Creek. John Loder is currently seen in the Warner Brothers picture Old Acquaintance and is now making the Jules Levy production The Hairy Ape. Edgar Barrier is now seen in the Universal picture Flesh and Fantasy. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear Ronald Coleman and Greer Garson in Random Harvest. Have you heard about Spry? Your ration point go farther, go further, go farther. Your ration point go farther, further when you're cooking with Spry. Yep, Spry is the shortening by. Women everywhere are saying... A jar of Spry, please. A jar of Spry. A jar of Spry, please. Spry. 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 This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>